Welcome back everyone and we're here today for the second part of the mini series and today we're going to look at maggots down the middle in the deepest water. So what I'm going to do is run through rigs, bait, areas to fish and how we go about it and hopefully we'll catch some fish. So let's get it underway. Right, so you join me on the box now. In the first half we caught a cross on pellets but now it's time to focus on maggots down the middle in the deepest water. This is a tactic which you'll be looking to use from an hour and a half to the end of the match depending on how well you're catching. This is because you can catch all sorts here, you can catch F1's carp, I'd, and here at Western Pools there's a lot of silverfish and F1's so that's a great way to target them. Now this peg is quite unique with a big bridge and where to fish can be quite confusing. Do you fish straight in front of you, do you fish on an angle, do you fish towards a bridge? Now I personally like to fish down the middle straight down the middle of the centre part and you can see it this is because in the past I've found it's a nice flat area you can catch them fish them F1s are willing to go down and feed happily on there so I've plumbed up there bottom of the body of the float just so it's nice on the bottom so what I'm going to do now is talk you through the bait and the rigs and how we're going to feed it so the bait couldn't be any simpler just got some red maggots nicely made so they're nice and soft we're just going to feed these with either a catapult or pot in. Now, with the pot, I've just got a medium pot. I can also change to a small pot with a hole in, depending on how many fish we're getting in the peg. For example, if there's only a few fish feeding, I might just want to feed 10 maggots, get the fish to uh, the bait to the bottom to catch some fish. If it's really good and I need to pop my bait on the bottom, I can fill that up, plop it in, and catch them that way. But here at Western Pools it's quite unique there's a lot of silver fish and these fish like catching shallow even in the depths of winter you can catch these fish shallow two and a half three foot deep three and a half foot deep now this is where you'll need to loose feed your bait I'd especially love loose feed see so because it's a bit too far to throw your bait we're gonna have to use a catapult but to start the session I literally at the all-in or the start of your session I'd feed a big pot so a good handful of maggots just on the bottom to get any fish in the area interested interested then again with a 45 minutes in do the same again so when you drop on it with an hour and a, hour and a half in if you need to there'll be some fish there waiting hopefully so that's the point we're at now i'm just going to talk you through my rigs and then we'll get some fishing done so like i said before there's going to be two different rigs for this line it's an ideal line you can get two rigs out of one or two areas of the peg at a one swim so it's really ideal the first elastic nine drawer slip is just my go-to elastic for winter i've said it a lot before use it a lot on the bottom it just doesn't let me down 015 main line again now this time i've got an f1 maggot in 4 by 14 i chose to use a 4 by 14 because it's just over five foot deep and i want to get my bait straight to the bottom but still nice and finesse and the shotting pattern replicates this. I've got five number eights in a bulk, then two number 10 droppers. So when the bulk sets, I can still have a nice fall and any of them fish sitting just off the bottom will watch it fall and hopefully pick up my hook bait. Now I've got a four inch of SFL pre-tied, which I've cut down in 18 to 011, just keeps it nice and balanced. So if I hook any carp, I'm gonna get them in and I can catch them hard as well. Now you hear me speak a lot about eyed and even you can catch the F1 shallow. Now you need to just change your rigs and not, it's not the summer bagging you need, you can change your rigs to suit. So the first one's a seven Jura slip. Chose to use this because it's nice and soft. When I hook them fish, because it's clear, I don't want the fish crashing round on the top. I just want it to glide out my peg and ship back nice and soft, but it sets the hook. 015 mainline. Just a little back shot above the float so when, I'm, when it's arcing over I can hold on tight and see them sharp dinks if I need to go move my float down. Then I've got an F1 shallow in 4B8. Now you may think that's a bit light for say fishing two and a half, three foot deep but I want a real slow fall and this is a shot in pattern replicates this. I got it all the way through my rig just strung out number 12 stots. reason why I've chosen to use stots is because I might have to move my rig, rig around these eyes might come dead shallow then next minute the F1s are underneath and I just need to move it around. Don't need to set loads of shallow rigs up in the winter, just a couple max, say three foot, two and a half foot, just to cover yourself up. Make sure you have a nice long lash to get the pole away from the, 
the flow because it's quite clear. Hook length, same as the bottom. O11, 18, SFL, just cut it down to four inch. So it's all nice and simple. There's no messing around, there's no faffy rigs. They're just nice and simple and they work the way they should do. So let's get some fishing done. Right, so we're gonna get some fishing done now. So just to start off, I'm just gonna put double red maggot on. Just talking through the thin ends, there's a lot of hot points showing. Nick that one too much. And now to start the session, because I don't know, I haven't loose fed anything, all I'm going to do is put my medium cup on, fill it full of maggots. Oh, got some in here. What's this here? Hey, gudgeon! <laughs> <laughs> got him. Right. Ooh. Got loose today. Put him back. Right, so... Put two maggots on. Throw it out there, try not to catch a gudgeon again. Fill it up. And what I'm going to do is give it a good dunk under the water. This does two things. Stops it really bouncing around in my pot. And also, when I feed my bait, it goes in like a little golf ball. It goes straight to the bottom. Because then pots have got the holes in. Water drains out, so you don't have to worry about that. So what I want to do is get to my mark, which is there, feed my bait, lift my rig back, flick it that way. Now what I want to do, when, it, when it's arcing over, just drop my back shot into the water and hold it tight. Now when I hold it tight, you want to see any stabs on the way down. This means the fish coming off the bottom and I have to lose feed. If nothing happens, see how the indication then, if nothing happens and I just fish as normal, but what might happen is, if there's a lot of fish there off the bottom, we're going to get a lot of signs straight away. Miss bites, even the odd foul looker, and then we're going to have to lose feed. So, just got to be wary when you're starting your session Ooh. of looking for this. Like I said before, there's a lot of hide in this venue. They will always want to feed shallow. Just flick it back out. Make sure you hold on. You can see all the sharp ding. See that's gone on the drop there. So straight away I'm thinking I need to lose feed. Because it's eyed off the bottom. Look at them. Ooh. Look at them, nice fish though, eight ounces. Well, they just sit off the bottom, quite a greedy fish, so. I'm gonna do is flick that out. Just trap around there. There we go. So I'm gonna do the same again, just cause don't want to take doing decisions too rational yet, but from past experience, I know I'm going to have to start loose feeding in a second. Put it straight over the top. Make sure that back shot's nice and tight, so it's like an L. You can see the float fighting against the back shot, which is important because you see all the sharp dinks like that on the way down it is really important to make sure you read your flow and feed accordingly we caught that one on the bottom as you can see that nine jora nice and soft for these eyed well, they're good size, but this is what I mean by in the middle of the match you can catch a great weight of these. Especially if you catch them shallow, which they will come off the bottom today. There's a lot of fish with obviously pleasure fishing. There's not match conditions, there's going to be a lot more fish 
so you come off the bottom a lot easier but we'll just keep going for now but this is the things you got to look for when you're fishing is miss bites liners why if you're missing them and not catching them there's a reason why so just think about how you can change that so dunk that under the water Swing that in there, feed in line with that, make sure it's all tight again, see your bulk going down. There you go, bump one on the way out then, just keep it nice and tight. See that then, nice sharp dink on the way, it's still arcing over, so it does show me the shallow well, off the bottom, but so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pot off and then I'm going to loose feed. Obviously, I'd, if I was fishing shorter, I'd loose feed with hand, but because we're fishing a bit further out, like 11 meters, just holding on to the 30 meter section, I'm going to have to feed with a catapult, which is fine. Just means you can catch the fish a lot quicker as well. You're not refeeding your part, you're not slowing down to feed your part, you can just go out, flip your rig out. So to do this take your part off, drop it in there. You can see how faster you can be now, you can literally ship out Flick it out there. I like to feed twice just to give two comms a bait. Fed quite aggressive there, but there's going to be a lot of fish there. And with the depth, I want to send them fish to the bottom if any are going down to the bottom. Obviously, if more fish come in, then the fish will keep coming off and we'll have to pick the shallow we got. But see there, now we've loose fed quite heavy we haven't had any fish on the drop rigs just sat in position I'm waiting for a bite like I was saying before just because you potted some bait and caught a few fish on the drop don't be too hasty that you think you got a fish shallow all the time that loose feed could easily send them down to the bottom and it's, it's often you can catch these fish on the bottom with loose feed but the more you loose feed the more fish you're going to draw in and the more fish you draw in, there you go oh, it's just off the bottom the more fish you draw in the more fish are going to come up and you're going to catch shallow that way we're going to feed again a little bit less this time See if you get any signs on your float, any movements. Oops, the drop. It's another liner. So you can see that I had a few problems when I potted and I started loose feeding and I haven't caught anything yet. I fouled up one, missed a couple of bites and it's causing me an issue. So now I'll be thinking, right, I need to change to do that. Now to me, I'm thinking I need to fish shallow because I'm getting a lot of missed bites. I know I do in my peg. I know these fish like coming shallow and you can catch them like that. Oh. So just try and persevere for a couple of minutes before we do pick up the shallow rig. It's crazy to think you'd even get a bite shallow because the water's so clear. You probably see 18 inches, two foot down. And these eyes are just... See another indication there off the bottom. Go. 
go what this is. Feels like an F1. Here it is. So it just shows, just because you're getting a few out, there's F1s on the bottom. Now, look at that. If they're really good days, these you can feed early and you can catch a great rate of them. Look at the sides of this. Look at that one. Ooh. Bit lively still. Try and holding up for you. Look at that. That's fantastic, that is. Just shows a bit of loose feed maggots in the deep water. That's where you can catch them. Sort that hook out. So what we're going to do now is just keep the same process. It's a really good time we caught an F1. Like that, so what I want to do is just pick some maggots. Make sure you get nice and accurate. Good thing about the bridge is you can bounce them off it. Make sure you're nice and accurate, holding on tight so that rig falls. Ooh. Rig falls nice and natural. And if a fish picks anything up or stabs at it, you can see it on the flow when you can strike and hopefully it'll be on. It's really important to just be nice and patient with it. In the winter months you can catch really well in this deep water on maggots. You can be nowhere and you can have a great run down the middle and catch them. Beauty a place like here at Western, Monk Hall, there's a lot of lot of eyes and selfish just to tick over. You can add 20, 20, 30 pounds into your net before these F1s feed but I've had a lucky one early which is a good sign again what we might have to do if we're not getting any bites on the bottom when we've been loose feeding switch back to the pot start again if there's something wrong you've got to change something now five minutes ago I was thinking there's a lot of hide in the peg when I've been loose feeding I haven't really caught any hide. Ooh. I haven't caught any hide. I've caught an F1 and missed a few bites. But that's an hide, that was on the drop that. Okay, it's important to work your rig still. Keep flicking it out. If you haven't had a bite in a while, just so you don't miss any of these fish, the big fish. Real weight builders and they're not very difficult to catch if you get your rig and feeding right. Look at the size of that one. Look at that, that's an easy pound that is. And easy pound that one. Double maggot, just getting back. Double maggot seems to be doing the damage, just a, two reds. Just keep it nice and simple. Don't get me wrong, if you're on a peg where you want to throw it at five metres and you think that's the best place to six metres, that's the best place to do it, then that's fine. But with this bridge here, you couldn't ignore fishing down the middle to it in the winter months. It's the deepest part, there's a big cover next to it. That's where these fish love to go. It's just fishing to what's in your peg and around you. Don't be wrong, if I drew behind me on 46, where it's quite... Now it's like 40 metres wide, 
like a canal style channel another ride there then I just fish it down the middle bang smack down the middle of the deepest water but you can see you can catch a real big weight of these eyes and then the other one mixed in between in conjunction with say fishing back across or down the edge you can real do a weight of them Ooh, popped out the net that one let's have a look at him that's what I mean it's just big big stamped silverfish that are willing to feed in the winter months and just great sport even if you were on a pleasure session or you're in your matches or your club matches just it's worth targeting bites than trying to go all out for carp and trying to catch 10 carp where you can just get loads of bites it's really enjoyable and you put more weight in that don't get me wrong not every not every peg you're going to catch carp and f1s on so sometimes they're a saving grace just undo my rig there tangled as he popped off but straight out of that nice and tight so it's all going to come down i'm going to loose feed again just cut down the loose feed a little bit just 10 maggots twice as long as there's some noise there. Hold on to my rig, that was off the bottom, that one. Flick it out. Hold on tight. Make sure you're holding on to that rig, it's so important. That carbon stem follows your bolt all the way down and allows you to read your pegger so important when you're trying to look to fish two areas of your peg if you're not getting signs then the bottoms are where to fish if you're getting too many signs you can come up if you were to fish a wire stem float there you just bomb straight past them fish you wouldn't even know they were there like i said in the winter time it's about making the most of your peg you don't want to be sitting there biteless when you can be getting bites regular and putting more fish in sharp thing then let it catch up to the area the loose feed there because we had a few indications a lot more bait there now so I'm getting a few signs again now so might pick the shallow again up in a minute just to see if I can catch anything Everything's there. The feed again. Just about working the rig. Keep working it. Keep holding on to it. Missing a few bites now, so. really important to make the correct decision so I'm missing a few bites I'm still loose feeding so to me there's a few hide off bottom and I want to go up up in my peg clear them out so they're not there when I flip my rig back in and then drop back down on the bottom and hopefully catch a few fish this is the beauty of maggots you can go in catch what you can shallow as soon as you stop getting bites shallow they are going to bite as soon as you get, stop getting bites shallow, you can drop back on the bottom, catch some fish, and then because you're loose feeding, what will happen is you'll bring more fish back in. More fish back in. And then you have to come back shallow again. But as you can see, they're not bad fish. Just under a pound eyed, that one. Real nice fishing. What I'm going to do now is have a quick look, Shella. Take that shot. Quick look, Shella. So, 
got this uh, about, just check me down, just under three foot deep. So I want to say like 32 inch, something like that. And all I'm going to do is just slip a single maggot on. Because I'm fishing the rig so light, it'll take a while to settle up and I'll be able to see where these eyed are in my peg if there's any there. And do lay it in. Once again, make sure that back shot's tight. This time, just feed a little bit less. Twigging my peg at the minute. There we are. Feed a bit less. So less competition for him to eat your bait as it falls through the water. Don't be wrong, we might not catch any. You might have to drop back on the bottom. Just accept you're missing a few bites and try and change your feed into soup. Like, well, that was a bite then. Ooh. That was a bite then. So what I'm going to do now is pick up four or five maggots, cat them in, make sure there's something falling through the water from there. Don't get a bite, just lift your float out, drop it back in. Same as summer fishing, you've got to keep working your bait. Trying to trick these fish into taking it. You're wrong, just keep flicking it out, working it. It might be. Might be the case when you just need to fit. Feed a bit more, sit on the bottom, be a bit more patient. There isn't many fish coming up in the water. A bite there. Ooh. We've got some bites to work with at least. They're coming as a rig settling, so I'm thinking maybe just go a bit deeper. Not coming. Oh, that one there. I said, see that elastic there now? That fish has come out my peg and didn't top and turn in my peg, which is ideal because you don't want that happening if you've got a lot of fish there. But it was an instant, we had to work at it, but look at the size of that. Fantastic sport, these. That's another pound fish. Look at that. But nice light rig. Single maggot doing the trick. Now what I'm gonna do is make a little adjustment. I'm gonna put about two, three inches on my rig just to go a bit deeper because I did have a few bites. So move back short. Up. Not shot there. Just go a bit deeper because that's where the fish might be. Just sitting just off bottom. Like three three and a bit foot. It's all about changing your depth, working with it. That's why I've used stots, just so I can play about with how I'm going to catch these fish. Don't be wrong, in half an hour's time there might be loads of fish there and you might come a foot deep, you might have to change your rig then. But... Let's see what the indication straight away then, which is a good sign because it's a lot quicker than the other indication we've had. Maybe another bite there. So feel like we've got something to work with now. We do is feed some bait again. There you go. That was on the drop. See that that elastic's lovely just guiding that fish out of the peg. Which you want in this clear water. It's not too strong. It's allowing me just to ship back at a nice steady pace. I take it off with my short free just so I can lift it up. Like that. Another big, big eye. Getting back. Just a single maggot doing the damage on an 18 hook. 
see how fast you can catch these fish. You're not flicking your rig into five, six foot of water. You're just flicking it in three foot deep. A few maggots. Flirt them in. Make sure you're still holding on dead tight. And see them little dinks when they're mad. So one little trick if the rig's just sat there, lift it up, drop it down. Just a dip causes them to fall past and they might snatch at it. Might get another fish like that. Ooh, caused a bite then. So because we had a bite, we're gonna lay it back in, start the little process again, feed a few maggots. There you go. There's an eye. So that fish is coming out the peg now. What? The funny creatures these are, they have a tendency to fall off your fish too heavy for them or too light so it's getting your tackle balanced but there's another another big eye there. Like I said before, a fantastic sport, look at the size of that. That is a fantastic fish. So what we're gonna do now is have one more and then hopefully we've given you a good rundown of how to attack this peg in the winter, where to look for and how to fish it. Now don't be wrong, throughout the day you might have to drop shallow, drop on the bottom, keep catching, but them F1s will turn up at some point depending where they are. They're most likely to turn up on the bottom, but you'll stop getting biked off hide later on in the match. And then you have to fish on the bottom a bit more and that's where you'll catch your F1s. But it's just all about, oh look at that, I can pull the elastic out of that one. Could even be an F1 to end on. I don't reckon it will be, it'll probably be an hide now. I'm not very good at getting fish at the minute. But just about working the rig. It's an eye. Working your rig to, to suit what's in your peg. So if you're getting a lot of liners, indications, miss bites, come up and catch these fish shallow. If you stop catching these fish shallow, drop back on the bottom and start the process again. And what you'll find is you'll just keep putting fish in the net and having great days like this. But I'm going to have one more because it's so good and then I will call it a day then but just important everyone's got the tackle right what they're looking for how much to feed because these pairs can be quite daunting when you draw them and loads of options you've got plateaus you've got points you've got bridges you've got deep water shallow water and it's just where to fish and I just like to keep it nice and simple fish a free lined attack and keep putting them fish in the net there you go, there's another one. And you can see how effective it is now we're catching shallow. These eyed. That skimmer. Go on the Jimmy Rimmer. We got a skimmer. See you can catch all sorts. Look at that. Hey hey. I'll have to have one more because of that. How difficult, him, Shella. Just shows how black this place is. I'll have to have another go. So we see you just keep putting fish in the net. Nice and enjoyable. I like this time time of year. You get like little excitements like a skimmer, a big perch, odd chub, tench that you don't normally catch in the summer because you're too busy catching F1s and carp. But it's like it's nice, nice and chilly today. Gonna have one more. Make sure it's all nice and tight, that's the most important thing. You're not gonna miss a bite then. Keep it nice and still. Keep flirting them maggots in. Not many. Oh, too far that one. Oh, there you are. Pull the rest out of that one. I'm not playing guest at this because I'm not very good at it. But denied. So, End on this one. So there you go, another ride. 
to the collection we've had. Been a fantastic few hours fishing here at Weston. We've caught eyes, F1s, even had a skimmer sheller, which is a bit crazy, but hope you've understood the tactics of fishing in the deepest water on maggots here at Weston, where to fish on this peg and what to look for. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the bank soon. Cheers. Sounds